Now we are going to start CNS tumors. You know that most of the brain tumors occur sporadically. Most of the brain tumors occur sporadically. What are the risk factors for brain tumors? First, radiation exposure and there are certain genetic abnormalities which are associated with increased risk of brain tumor. So, what are those genetic abnormalities in which there is increased risk of brain tumor? First is retinoblastoma, second leaf Fraumeni syndrome, third is neurofibromatosis both neurofibromatosis 1 and neurofibromatosis 2. Next is MEN1 syndrome and you know that MEN1 syndrome it is associated with which tumor? It is associated with pituitary adenoma. MEN1 syndrome associated with pituitary adenoma. After that Turcot syndrome, we discussed that Turcot syndrome it is associated with familial adenomatous polyposis. This is autosomal recessive and it is associated with brain tumor. Most commonly it is associated with FAP, familial adenomatous polyposis and what is the tumor? The tumor is medulloblastoma. The tumor is medulloblastoma and sometimes it is associated with HNPCC. If it is associated with HNPCC, then the tumor is glioblastoma multiform. So, if it is associated with HNPCC, then the tumor is glioblastoma multiform. Next is VHL syndrome, von hippel lindau syndrome and you know that this von hippel lindau syndrome, it is associated with hemangioblastoma and what is the location of tumor? Cerebellum. So, it is associated with which tumor? Cerebellar it is associated with cerebellar hemangioblastoma, hemangioblastoma. Next is Gorlin syndrome, next is tuberous sclerosis. So, how to remember there is a mnemonic and the mnemonic is RL, RL not in, not in MTVGT. So, you can see here RL not in MTVGT. So, R retinoblastoma, L leaf from any syndrome, N NF1, NF2, M min 1 syndrome, Turcot syndrome, V VHL syndrome, G Gorlin syndrome and T tuberous sclerosis. So, these are the genetic abnormalities associated with increased risk of brain tumor. It is frequently asthenic. Now, see the WHO classification of brain tumor. First, neuroepithelial tumor and neuroepithelial tumor, it is further divided into glioma pineal tumor, medulloblastoma and neuronal tumor. In glioma, these are the tumors which are included, astrocytoma, oligodendroglioma, ependymoma and choroid plexus tumor. Second is pineal tumor, there is medulloblastoma. In neuronal tumor, we include ganglioganglioma, gangliocytoma, neuroblastoma. Then there is nerve sheath tumor and in which we include vestibular schwannoma, there is meningeal tumor and the example is meningioma, there is pituitary tumor. In germ cell tumors, we include germinoma and teratoma, there is lymphoma and there are tumor like malformations like craniopharyngioma and you know that this craniopharyngioma it is more common in children. There can be dermoid tumor, there can be epidermoid tumor, there can be colloid cyst. There are metastatic tumor and you know that most common brain tumor it is metastasis or secondaries and they can be contiguous extension from regional tumor and the example is glomus tumor. So, this is WHO classification of brain tumor. First, let us discuss the important one liner questions which are asked in relation to brain tumor. First question, what is the most common brain tumor and you know it is metastasis or secondaries. So, most common brain tumor this is metastasis metastasis or secondaries. Next, from where this metastasis is coming to the brain means what is the most common primary for brain metastasis? So, most common primary it is carcinoma lung, this is carcinoma lung followed by carcinoma breast. Okay. After that, what is the most common primary for leptomeningeal metastasis? Leptomeningeal means covering around the brain. So, meninges are involved most common primary for leptomeningeal metastasis and this is carcinoma breast. This is carcinoma breast. Now, see the
primary brain tumor so what is the most common primary brain tumor this is meningioma in 35% cases 35% of the cases meningioma and in 30% of the cases it is glioma or glial tumor so most common primary brain tumor this is meningioma meningioma in what percentage of patients in 35% patients followed by glioma in 30% in 30% next what is the most common malignant brain tumor in children and the same tumor it is most radio sensitive also so for both the answer is same most common malignant brain tumor in children and most radio sensitive brain tumor for both answer is same it is medulloblastoma this is medulloblastoma next important question that what is the most common suprasilar mass in adults and most common suprasilar mass in children in adults it is pituitary adenoma and in children it is craniopharyngeoma in adults it is pituitary adenoma this is pituitary adenoma and in children it is craniopharyngeoma this is craniopharyngeoma craniopharyngeoma clear next there are many brain tumors which are associated with calcification so which brain tumor is associated with calcification in almost all of the cases that is craniopharyngeoma in 90% of the cases oligodendroglioma is associated with calcification and in 20 to 25% cases it is the meningioma which is associated with calcification so how to remember mnemonic is com mnemonic is com clear here c means craniopharyngeoma this is craniopharyngeoma so in how many patients there is calcification in almost all patients of craniopharyngeoma after that oligodendroglioma almost 90% patients have calcification and after that there is meningioma and in what percentage of patients there is calcification 20 to 25% so sometimes the question is asked like this that which of the following tumor is having calcification all three options are mentioned and the fourth option is all of the above then choose all of the above and if all three options are mentioned and there is some other option which is also mentioned then you have to choose the tumor which is having maximum risk or in which all cases are having calcification and that is craniopharyngeoma clear so you have to choose the option depending upon the language and depending upon the option now coming to the spinal tumors there is one similarity most common brain tumor as well as most common spinal tumor answer is same in both it is metastasis so most common spinal tumor answer is same it is metastasis metastasis so most common brain tumor as well as most common spinal tumor this is metastasis now what is the most common primary spinal tumor and this is nerve sheath tumor this is nerve sheath tumor nerve sheath tumor clear what is the most common intramedullary tumor and this is astrocytoma astrocytoma clear after that what is the most common site of primary spinal tumor and this is intradural extramedullary what's the location this is intradural extramedullary intradural extramedullary clear so these are important one liners related to spinal tumor now see the special features of brain tumor there are three cardinal symptoms in brain tumor there are three cardinal symptoms one is seizures second there is increased intracranial tension because there is space occupying lesion so it leads to headache and the third is focal neurological deficit now first question what kind of headache is there so this is morning headache this is worse in morning it's worse in morning and on straining so there is morning head headache worse in morning and on straining and it is associated with nausea and vomiting the headache it is associated with nausea and vomiting clear there is focal neurological deficit 
So what happens? If the patient is having focal neurological deficit, first, the deficit depends on the location. Second, it is progressive in nature. Why? Because over the period of time, the size of tumor keeps on increasing. So focal neurological deficit, first, it is progressive. It is progressive over the period of time and it depends on the location. It depends on the location of tumor. Imagine a patient is having brain tumor and the patient is having pituitary adenoma. So this patient will be having endocrine abnormalities like you know that the most common pituitary adenoma it is prolactinoma. So because of prolactinoma patient is having galactoria there is aminoria. So if patient is having pituitary adenoma these patients will be associated with or having endocrine abnormality. So pituitary adenoma it will be associated with endocrine abnormalities clear for most of the brain tumor what is the investigation of choice and you know it is MRI so MRI is investigation of choice for brain tumor now see the management what are the drugs we give in the management of brain tumor first dexamethasone so what is the role of dexamethasone it is going to reduce the peritumoral edema and how it is going to reduce the peritumoral edema by stabilizing the cell membrane so dexamethasone it is going to reduce or decrease peritumoral edema peritumoral edema by stabilizing the cell membrane second some of the tumors are very close to sensory motor strip and if the tumor is very close to sensory motor strip it will be associated with seizures so in such cases we are giving anti-epileptics so it is given for the tumors given for the tumors close to close to sensory motor strip why because these are the tumor which are associated with seizures so in such cases we have to give anti-epileptics what is the role of mannitol mannitol is administered before dural opening and operative resection now you know that mannitol it is a hypertonic solution so what it is going to do it is used for osmotherapy it means it is going to decrease the edema by decreasing intracranial pressure so it decreases edema and thereby decreases intracranial pressure it is hypertonic this is hypertonic solution so it is used like osmotherapy clear so it decreases edema and thereby it is going to decrease the intracranial pressure these are the drugs which are used in the management of brain tumor 